Hey guys, hi and welcome to the video. In this video, I'll be providing a quick uh, insight about DynamoDB, the theory part. So fast, flexible, NoSQL database service for single digit millisecond performance at any scale. Couple of years back, I took a course on Pluralsight, that is AWS DynamoDB Deep Dive by Ivan Mustake. Very great course. These are essentially screenshots from his presentation or slides, okay? All right, so, DynamoDB is massively scalable database with low latency, low operational overload, high availability, integrated with many AWS services. A lot of companies like Netflix, uh, Under Armour, Airbnb, Samsung, Adobe are, opt are using it. Uh, so, you know, uh, DynamoDB is a NoSQL database, but there are variety types of NoSQL. For example, you have a key value, document, columnar, graph. Um, DynamoDB, the, the, the table doesn't have schema since it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, since it's a NoSQL, right? Uh, data types in DynamoDBs are string, number, binary, boolean, null, right? Then you have list, sets, set of binary, sets of number, map, which is nothing but a dictionary or a hash map. Uh, DynamoDB has a concept of partition key. Every table should have a partition key and uh, every item should have it same type in all items each item should have a unique value it's sort of like a primary key think of it like that okay another important thing is your size cannot exceed your data size or the row size cannot exceed more than 400 kilobytes in scenario where it exceeds more than 400 kb you have to store it on s3 and have the path of s3 in dynamodb table uh, dynamodb offers two sort of scaling that is provisional and on-demand scaling in provisional scaling, you essentially specify the throughput, right? In terms of RCUs and WCUs. If you don't know what is RCUs, WCUs, I'll tell you in this video, don't worry. RCU is nothing but how many essentially read up to four kilobytes per second. So if you're reading up to four KB, that's one RCU. Similarly, WCU goes for one kilobyte. So as you can see uh, in this situation, if you read 17 kilobytes of data, you'll be charged for five RCUs, but you'll say 17, four, it was four kilobytes, four, four, 16, then why five? Well, Amazon near essentially, uh, it, it essentially rounds up to the nearest value. So it's gonna charge you for the five. Uh, one RCU will cost you about 0.5 uh, cent per month. That's very cheap, okay? So very, very cheap. WCU is 0.2 cent per month, right? Uh, DynamoDB has auto scaling, right? You could easily enable that. Uh, the, you wanna go for auto scaling in scenario where you have unusual traffic is sporadic, which means you don't know when you'll expect a sudden burst or good for very new application. But if you know your traffic and you know the throughput, uh, then you could easily define WCUs and RCUs. DynamoDB has two sort of keys, as I said, uh, simple key and composite key, also called as partition key and sort key. Let me explain you the concept of simple key and composite key in, in a very easy way. A key is composed of two attributes, partition and sort key. So a pair should be unique. All items should have both partition and sort key, right? While creating table, you have to specify that. Um, so provides both partition and sort key value, provides partition key value. And so you can use operator like less than equal to greater than equal to, you know, all sort of stuff on the sort key, right? Very, very easy, comes very handy. Um, for example, a very simple example I would show you is the user ID table here. The user ID is the partition key where I can say, hey, give me all the user by ID one, right? So a very popular example and the sort key would be, hey, give me all the user by ID one and give me uh, where timestamp is greater than X amount. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as you can see, a very popular example of a partition and sort. But if you want to query on message um, column, well, you, you, you Technically you cannot, but technically you can. For example, you can use a scan query, but scan is gonna scan your entire table and very, very expensive. So I do not recommend sc writing scan queries. Instead, I would recommend setting up indexes, which I'm gonna cover up in, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, right, right now, okay? So um, as you can see, as I said, right, scan queries are extremely slow, right? Uh, so for example, uh, if you, you know, if you, uh, wanna query on those columns, right? You could set up indexes. So for example, as you can see, um, here I have number, ID and name. Say I wanna query on name, right? I have to scan through everything, which is a very, very slow process, right? So instead I could set up indexes to speed things up. Uh, so a popular example, uh, you know, is this. There are two types of indexes, that is LSI and GSI. I, 
Um, yeah, so LSI and GSI, LSI stands for local secondary index, GSI stands for global secondary. LSI allows you to have a different sort key and the same partition key. Uh, Samuel, what do you mean by that? Okay, so here I can say, hey, give me the user ID one and timestamp greater than thousand and then sort by messages. So now since I have an LSI on my column message, I could perform sort very easily, right? So you could do that, more examples of LSI, right? On the other hand, GSI essentially, uh, GSI will help you to have a different partition key. Um, so for example, here, username is John and I have an email, right? The original table. And when I set up a GSI, let's say I want to do a GSI on username, right? I could set up a GSI and, and, and then, I, then I can query email. But as you can see from the this um, uh, slide, uh, when you set up GSI, data is copied to another table, okay? So this is very important for you to know that, okay? And there is a limit, okay? You can't set up like thousands of GSI and LSI. Up to five LSI per table and 20 GSI per table. You can of course exceed by contacting the support, right? Uh, then the next thing that we could talk about is DynamoDB streams. Uh, uh, essentially, DynamoDB streams will allow you to have change events. You could process that using lambdas, right? That's a very popular feature. A uh, lot of people are um, adopting to use that. That is DynamoDB uh, streams, right? Uh, then they have something called DAX as well, which will cover, uh, you know, I just want to cover uh, in a, a very short. So, so I'll, I'll search on Google DynamoDB DAX. So let me see DynamoDB. Yeah, DynamoDB Accelerated DAX. So um, Amazon DynamoDB Accelerated DAX is a fully managed, highly available memory cache for DynamoDB that delivers up to 10 times performance improvement from millisecond to a microsecond, even at millions of requests per second. Great, as I said, right? Uh, but I just wanted to give you an overview on DynamoDB. I hope you have enjoyed a nice theory or, or rather high level overview on DynamoDB. If you did enjoy that, let me know in the comment section below. And as I said, right, if you want to dive deep, uh, I took this course like two years back by Evan Mustaki, deep dive on DynamoDB on plural side. So thank you for the author. Thank you to the author for publishing such great course. So I could learn and I could teach other people as well. All right, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming and see you guys next time.